Is hydrogen technology actually safe? This is a question that's been raised by many investors and technologists over the past few decades as the investments in the hydrogen space have skyrocketed. Are we just driving hydrogen bombs down the road in the Toyota Mirai and the Hyundai Nexo, or are there actual safety measures that can be scaled up effectively, making sure that your average consumer does not end up in a lethal situation? And how exactly does hydrogen gas compare to gasoline or diesel when it comes to safety? Well, that question is exactly what I want to address in this video. But as usual, guys, before you get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, I want to lay the groundwork for the data I'm about to share regarding hydrogen safety characteristics. I want to make sure that you guys get an accurate representation of comparing hydrogen fuel in different scenarios, because let's be honest, the industrial applications and consumer industries are completely different. The Toyota Mirai user is going to face a completely different set of requirements when it comes to safety than your industrial company that's going to use hydrogen as a feedstock. And as a result, it's important to understand both sides of the argument and also address some of the lingering conspiracy theories about what happened when the Hindenburg. So first things first, we need to understand that hydrogen as a gas is not something new. It's been used in the chemical, industrial, and processing facilities for over a hundred years. Hydrogen gas is critical at oil refineries to remove excess sulfur from oil. It is used in the manufacturing of steel, glass, and even products like ammonia, which obviously is critical for all the food that you eat. And as a result, the industrial side has developed an extremely effective way of using hydrogen gas in their applications without causing too much of a safety concern. And let's be honest, industrial applications already rely on gases that are actually more combustible than hydrogen, and they've been using them safely for the past hundreds of years, which is something we want to keep in mind as we invest in hydrogen over the next few decades, which is all about not creating excess fear for a technology that is already so mature in various industrial applications. But obviously, I understand that most of the concern around hydrogen is on the consumer side of things, whether that be for a fuel cell vehicle, a fuel cell refueling station, or even hydrogen energy storage projects that could be paired with solar or wind energy. And that's where things actually get really interesting, because on paper, it seems like hydrogen would be completely disastrous in the hands of your average 20 year old who just got their first car out of high school. But in many cases, hydrogen is actually safer than gasoline, natural gas, and even diesel. And here's why. Because hydrogen is a non toxic gas, meaning unlike gasoline and hydrocarbons derived from oil, hydrogen does not contaminate the environment. Meaning if you were to ever inhale hydrogen, it's not actually lethal. Whereas with gasoline and diesel, those toxic fumes can actually hurt your respiratory system at an exponential pace. The only way that ingesting hydrogen into your respiratory system would be lethal is if at, at some point it would completely displace all the oxygen in your system and that would cause asphyxiation, which obviously is something that's more of a user ended problem, not really a problem of the gas because obviously asphyxiation can happen with every form of fuel or gas, just like if you were to leave your car running in a garage and leave it completely sealed in around five hours, you would form asphyxiation and potentially die. And the second reason is that the amount of explosive energy in a volume of hydrogen is significantly less than in a volume of gasoline. Now, granted, hydrogen is typically compressed, which does increase this. But even at a 700 bar pressure, the amount of energy inside a hydrogen system is much less than the amount of explosive energy inside a gasoline system. And obviously, hydrogen also happens to be the lightest element known to mankind, meaning during a hydrogen leak, the gas would immediately dissipate vertically into the atmosphere. Unlike gasoline or diesel, which would spill onto the ground during a tank rupture or an accident, hydrogen immediately dissipates, meaning the most combustible part of the vehicle or the gas system completely escapes the entire system immediately. Unlike in a gasoline system, where obviously the gasoline would be left on the ground and that could cause more fires and hazards, particularly in a car accident. And guess what? It actually takes less oxygen concentration to burn a gallon of gasoline than it does to burn a gallon of hydrogen. 
gasoline combusts around 1.4%, whereas hydrogen combusts in the range of 4 to 75%. And although these ranges seem to be extremely wide, they're actually typically very rare in your normal average conditions inside your household or even inside your car. It would take multiple hours for hydrogen concentration due to a leak to actually get to these levels, in which case if there were to be a spark, yes, the hydrogen would start to combust. But obviously we all know that's the same case for gasoline and diesel and all the other fuels that we're so addicted to. And also it's extremely well known that hydrogen in its purest form does not actually cause fire. It does not combust with a flame. It is odorless, tasteless, and colorless, which means that hydrogen gas overall does not spread like wildfire, like in the case of gasoline or diesel. And so the reality is that hydrogen as a gas offers many advantages from a safety perspective compared to other fossil fuels. Now obviously hydrogen still is an explosive gas and the fact that you cannot see it does make it more of a present danger, but just like we have safety measurements in place for gasoline engines and diesel systems, we're going to have safety measurements in place for hydrogen gas. But obviously the question on your guys' mind now might be about the pressure of hydrogen. Isn't hydrogen stored at a very high pressure, typically around 700 bar, which could make it unsafe? Well, the reality is we've been using high pressure systems in the entire globe for a very long time. India, for example, uses around 200 to 300 bars worth of CNG in over 1.5 million cars on the road. This isn't a very popular phenomenon here in the US or even in Europe, but in Indian developing countries, compressed natural gas cars or CNG vehicles are extremely popular. They're used by taxis and they're used by these small city cars by every single person imaginable in a very urban city because not only is it more cost effective than diesel or gasoline, but it also provides the same benefits of refueling a vehicle as fast as them. And as a matter of fact, the Toyota Mirai received 5 out of 5 stars from the Euro NCAP safety test, which obviously includes two massive hydrogen tanks mounted in the middle of the two axles. The car was tested from all different angles, and as Toyota has demonstrated countless times, their carbon fiber reinforced hydrogen tanks are extremely strong and even resist bullet damage, which obviously would be the worst case scenario even in a car accident. And because first degree burns tend to be the major cause of injury in gasoline car accidents, in a hydrogen car you would not be facing that problem anymore because the hydrogen gas would immediately dissipate and it does not actually cause burns unlike gasoline. Now yes, if there's some combustible fluid inside the vehicle, then that would combust. But because gasoline's energy density is so high in a car, and because in any sort of rupture, that gasoline would completely spread into the entire chassis, the risk is severely reduced with hydrogen. But obviously, for those of you wondering what caused the Hinderberg explosion to be such a big problem when it comes to hydrogen, the reality is not the same as the media makes it out. You see, if you do your research on the Hindenburg accident, it actually occurred because of a flaw with the butyl based coating on the outside of the ship. Essentially, because of the static charge buildup on that coating, there was a fire ignited because of a random spark, which caused the coating to catch on fire. And as we all know, if you were to mix fuel with fire, the end result doesn't tend to be too nice. And that's what happened in this case because the entire airship was filled with hydrogen. And so the coating catching on fire resulted in the hydrogen itself also catching on fire. But this would have been the case with any form of fuel. If that thing was filled up with diesel or gasoline, which would have been unrealistic. But if that would have happened, that whole thing would still have caught on fire. And so the root cause of the Hindenburg accident was not actually a flaw with the hydrogen leaking. It was a flaw with something causing a fire that caused the hydrogen to also catch on fire. And with the technology that we have 100 years later, there's very little chance for hydrogen to catch fire given the carbon composites and the polymer materials that engineers have developed. And obviously, since we've been using hydrogen for so long in industrial and chemical use cases, the technology has already matured significantly to avoid such leaks from happening and safety systems have already been put in place. And finally, what about hydrogen embrittlement? Well, even though this is a problem for certain materials, it is actually not a problem for most materials that are used in industrial applications. For those that don't know, hydrogen embrittlement is essentially the slow process where hydrogen gas being so small can actually interfere with the structural balance of a metal or a plastic. This is more common in steels like iron, nickel, titanium, and cobalt, 
but there are plenty of metals out there that are very much available like copper, aluminum, and stainless steel that are much less susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement. And as a result, in the longer term, this isn't a hindrance to the adoption of hydrogen technologies. Embrittlement like this tends to be a more significant problem at higher temperatures at significantly more elevated pressures north of 20 or to 30,000 psi. Your average car like the Toyota Mirai only runs around 700 bar and obviously that is inside the tank and all the other supporting systems like the fuel lines are all depressurized significantly below that. And for those that don't know, 700 bar equates to around 10,000 psi. And so for me as an investor and an engineer, this hydrogen safety issue that's been raised is not as big as the media has blown it out to be. Yes, we need safety precautions, but we need it for every technology out there, for every fuel that we use. We've already developed a supply chain for existing fuels, but that does not mean we don't develop one for the hydrogen industry. And we have plenty of companies globally that are working to make sure that safety is introduced into every single system. And for the mobility applications like trucks, planes, there's actually some benefits that hydrogen gas provides with its lightness and its ability to be non-toxic. But obviously, guys, that's just my opinion and my research. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below.